Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. In this class, we will look at effects and animations. An effect is a method, also called an effect method, that creates an animation-like effect. These methods are applied to a selector when an event occurs. So this is an important concept. In order to call that method, it is called using an event, such as a click. There are three basic categories under which effects can be placed. The first is hiding and showing. The second is sliding up and down. The third is fading in and out. Effects take three optional parameters. The speed factor or time with which the effect will occur. An easing value which determines how it proceeds, and an optional callback function, which will run after the effect is completed. The general syntax for an effect. Here we have a selector XYZ, dot click. The next line of code, we have some selector, dot effect. Inside the parentheses, we see three optional parameters. The first one being the speed, the second one being easing, the third one being an optional callback function. So the speed is the duration that the effect lasts, and speed is measured in milliseconds. There are 1,000 milliseconds in a second. Rather than coding in the milliseconds, you can also code in three other values, fast, which is essentially 200 milliseconds, normal, which is 400 milliseconds, which is the default, or slow, which is 600 milliseconds. You can also code in a number. Note that strings are enclosed in quotations, whereas numeric values are not. Okay, there are three effects or effect methods that concern showing and hiding. Dot hide, dot show, and dot toggle. And notice I have values for all three of these methods. We have already looked at hide and show in the previous class. And that pretty much allows something to appear and then to disappear. The toggle method toggles between these two effects, hide and show. So the first time you click, you would hide it. The second time you click, you would show it. I would like to point out that there are two other methods in jQuery that have the word toggle in them. So the first method here, the toggle effect method, which toggles between the hide and show effects will always take some kind of a time duration and an easing factor. So there are, so you have to specify some kind of time. If not, it defaults to 400 milliseconds. The next is the toggle event method. This event method was deprecated in jQuery 1.7 and we looked at this last week. This event method takes two functions. So you can see that the syntax is drastically different. The next is the toggle class method, which takes the name of a class as a parameter. The reason I am putting toggle class here is because you can do the same thing just about with toggle class as you can with toggle, meaning you can you can manipulate the display property in order to hide and show something. Although with toggle class, you do not have the ability to set a time duration, so it defaults to 400 milliseconds. So technically, they all three can be used to accomplish the same thing. 
All right, so here's an example. If I click the link and I wanted to hide and show a power a graph similar to what I have on the right hand page here, all I have to do is code in the name of the selector dot toggle. So when I am the click event the first time around, it will hide it. The second time around it will show it. And because I have not specified any parameters, the default feed speed is 400 milliseconds and the default easing value is swing. Okay, effects that slide up and down. Here I have three effects and I have an exam a speed example in each one of them. Slide up, slide down, and slide toggle. So slide up allows us to slide up and hide the selection rather than just hiding it. Slide down allows us to slide down and show it. And slide toggle allows us to toggle between the two, sliding up and sliding down. Now let me just explain that what is happening behind the scenes, we are actually manipulating the CSS height property. So essentially, whatever its default height is, we are taking it down to zero. And then we were toggling it back from zero up into its default height. So height doesn't necessarily have to be specified. The browser knows how high something is. The only difference is that we can determine how fast this happens. So here's an example. And here again, on the right hand side, if we were to click, we would see it sliding up and then see it sliding down. So here I have the same code. I'm clicking on a link and the power graph is the selector and the slide toggle method is sliding it open and sliding it closed. Here again, no parameters are specified, so I have a 400 millisecond speed and the easing is swing, which essentially means it goes from slow to fast at the end. Although it happens so fast, you really don't see a difference. All right. The third category of effects, this ability to fade in and out. Here I have three methods. Each of them are using a speed example. Fade in, which allows the content to fade into view. Fade out, fades out of view. And fade toggle, it manipulates between the two. What this is technically doing behind the scenes is manipulating the CSS opacity property. So by default, if something is on the page, it has an opacity of one. And when we fade it out, we are slowly setting the opacity property down to zero. And then vice versa when we toggle it back. So here we have the syntax. And here again on the right, we would slowly see this and then appear and then disappear. When we click on the link, we are applying the fade toggle method to the selector, the power graph, so it would slowly fade in and slowly fade out. Here again, no parameters are specified, so the speed is 400 milliseconds and the easing is swing. We also have a fade to effect, which is a little bit different. The fade to effect takes four possible parameters. One is required, and they go in this order. The speed, the opacity, the easing, and the callback function. The only op required parameter is opacity. So if you eliminate speed and easing, you are getting the default speed, which is 400 milliseconds, and the default easing, which is swing. Okay, so if you look at the syntax here, we have the selector dot fade to. We are fading it to a specific opacity. An opacity, which is a CSS property, is set in values between 0 and 1. And here we have an example. And if you see on the left, you see where we clicked and we took it down to an opacity 
of point um, four. Excuse me, that's a typo. It should be point four, not point zero four. And here we have the selector, the paragraph dot fade two. And notice in this instance, I did put a speed factor. And actually, I like to put speed factors of one or two seconds because it actually gives you more of an opportunity to actually see the effect happening. And once you can actually see it, then you can change it to something a little bit more realistic. We also have a delay method. The delay method takes a time parameter, one parameter, which is a time in milliseconds. It allows us to delay an effect. It also allows us to delay an animation, and we will cover that next. So here, if we wanted to delay a fade in effect, we can use the delay method dot fade in. And notice we are chaining these two methods to the selector. So here we see an example of the toggle effect method. Here we have a paragraph. When I click, I will slowly hide it, which essentially is the hide method. When I click again, I will slowly show it, which is the show method. So I am toggling between the hide and show methods. Now let's take a look at slide toggle. Here is my paragraph. When I click, it will slide up. When I click again, it will slide down. Notice it is faster than the hiding and showing. They are both set at 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. You see more of a sliding effect here. Finally, we have fade toggle. When I click, it fades out. When I click in, it fades in. And here again, the effect will vary with respect to the content that is being manipulated. 